Hi, I'm Scott Hamilton, Rockfile, back with another podcast, and I don't think I've ever done one like this in 330-some-odd episodes. This is going to be kind of a how-to-fix-a-modern oven. <laughs> Obviously, without video, it's not too much of a, of, a, of a how-to video, but I just wanted to tell you this little story because maybe it can save you and, and your friends and your family some money. I grew up in a household. My father could literally build anything out of wood. Uh, We had a desk, a dining room table with folding leaves and moving legs. And anything that we came up with or or wanted, um, if it wasn't readily available in a furniture store or whatever, my dad would whip it up or whip up his own version of it or something like that. And that instilled in me the – and plus he was a, a mechanic in the Air Force. So when it came to fixing cars and other mechanical things, he would figure it out. Sure, sometimes you call an expert. Oh, by the way, there's a thunderstorm moving in. So if you hear thunder in the background, it's it's not my tummy rumbling or anything like that. It's a pretty bad thunderstorm on the horizon. But my father was just one of those how-to kind of guys. And he... Obviously, there are times that you need a professional. When it came to plumbing and electrical stuff, we usually called a professional. But just about anything else he had to fix, he would figure it out. And these days, with things like Google and YouTube, um, I take it upon myself to fix things if I can. I don't mind turning off a breaker and working on electrical stuff. I've replaced everything from outlets to smart lights and switches and ceiling fans and motion-sensitive lights and rings and all that kind of stuff. Um, But there will be a time that, you know, it's out of my, I just can't, you know, I wouldn't be able to do that. Or, say, mounting a a, a big 65-inch TV on the wall. Call the Best Buy guys. You know, the Geek Squad will charge you, what, 100, 150 bucks to do it. They will do it in minutes compared to the hours it will take you to figure it out just because they do it every day. I think it's worth the price. But for some other things, like the story I'm about to tell you, it made sense to do it on my own. So my friend has this this oven. It's less than a year old or a little bit over a year old. It's a Whirlpool or whatever. It's a your typical black oven. It doesn't have convection or any of that weird stuff. But it's a nice glass top. And the lights for the cooktop is hot and the cooktop is on started staying on. They just wouldn't go off, even when it was cool, even when the thing was completely turned off. We turned off the breaker. We unplugged it. We tried to reset it. None of that. So my friend instantly says things like, oh, I have to get a new oven. I'm like, no, 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 no. Oh, now I'll call repairman. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Let me look it up. Let me see how difficult this would be to fix. And it turns out that that is a common problem with a lot of stoves these days. Um, switches get stuck. And we, we, you know that from pretty much any technology you've probably ever owned. Sometimes things just get stuck. But for an oven that's a year old, that's a little ridiculous. And it wasn't hurting anything that those lights are on, but it does kind of bother you. You know, I'm one of those kind of guys that if there's a squeak in the car or a clock's not set, I'm at your house and a clock's blinking, I'm going to go set it. I'm just that kind of guy. Um, and so, again, I tried everything. I turned off the breaker. I unplugged the stove. We tried to reset it. None of that worked. So I Googled it. And it turns out that's a common problem with modern stuff stoves that a switch will stick somewhere between uh, the element and the the logic and the lights will stay on. doesn't hurt anything, but again, it bothers me when things don't work, right? So the idea of calling a repairman, you're talking what? Uh, on the low end, probably 80 bucks. On the high end, 150 bucks. Um, and then the part. So when I Googled how to fix this, it turns out it's a stuck switch. They basically recommend opening it up. It's one of the four switches on the four dials on the front. Um, Take them out one at a time. See when the lights go off, right? Okay, that doesn't seem so hard. Then we looked up the part. The part from, I believe it's a Whirlpool, was $80. That's a lot of money for just a switch. So it did some more research. And turns out you can get an OEM part for under 20 bucks from Amazon. <laughs> so I'm like, before we buy a new range, that's what, very expensive, or you buy a, a hire a repairman, again, really expensive. Let me see how easy this is. So I watched a couple YouTube videos. We found the $20 part, went ahead and ordered the $20 part and said, if I can't do it, you know, I'll pay for the repairman, you know, if I break something, whatever. Um, so Amazon, two days, the part arrives. And I'm like, it's one of the front two burners because those are the ones that get used every day. The back burners hardly ever get used. And the first burner has a different kind of switch than the other three burners because it's kind of the brain of the operation. I said, so let me start with the other one. (laughs) That was the one. (laughs) Took that switch out, you know, took it out of line, turned the, uh, 
the, the stove back on, no lights. Hook the switch back up, turn the stove on, the lights came on. Okay, this is the bad switch. Order the switch. So for $19.99 and, and free shipping, because it's Amazon Prime, in two days the switch arrived. Follow the directions. You basically take the back cover of the stove off. You uh, unscrew the two screws that are holding the the potentiometer, <laughs> the dial, on the front. And you pull that out and you un- unplug the two wires that are connected to the switch. And you put a new switch in and you plug the two wires and you put all the screws back in and you're done. It was really that simple. So turned off the breaker, unplugged the stove, pulled it out from the wall, took the back off, took the, the, the potentiometer out of the front. Um replaced it oh by the way this oem part from amazon exactly the same part same model numbers same numbers copyrights every colors the thing was a carbon copy of what we had so already saving 60 dollars off buying it directly from whirlpool right and then i popped the new one in put the screws back in put the whole thing back together put it up against the wall plugged it in turned on the breaker and (gasps) the lights didn't come on the stove was working properly now, think about the amount of money saved. It literally cost $20 plus my time with a screwdriver. And that was it. It was the most simple repair of anything electronic I've ever done. Putting in a ceiling fan or a light switch is more difficult than this was. And 20 bucks. That's all it costs to fix the oven that's now working and used every day. If this will help you when something breaks in your house, obviously, if it's like a blender and it's sealed, you're not going to, you know... If it's a 20 to $40 appliance, just throw it away and buy another one. But if it's a several hundred dollar appliance and you Google how to fix it and it's really simple, do it. I mean, I can't imagine probably saved 150, 200 bucks or more. I mean, not picking on appliance repairmen or anything, but if I were appliance repairman, I would charge you my hourly rate or whatever. And then I would have bought the OEM part and charged you the $80 for the Whirlpool part and pocketed the 60 bucks myself. I, I don't think that's an underhanded thing. It's part of doing business, you know, and I know when I get my car repaired, I pretty much have to pay full price unless I get an OEM part and bring it in myself. Right. So in this particular case, doing it myself, it costs literally 20 bucks and an hour of time, not even. Um, I don't know what the, the takeaway from this is. You can do these things yourself. Just look it up and see how hard it is. And if, if it seems like something that you could crack the case on and do it, do it. We, the, and everybody was blown away that this worked, that it was that simple. And can you imagine if we had bought a new stove? <laughs> you know? So anyway, I just thought I would share that little story. Try and do it yourself. Google the directions. See if if that model of whatever it is has had that problem that you're having. There's probably hundreds of people who have figured out how to solve that problem. And one of the solutions I read was very complicated where they wanted you to test each switch and all that. But I, I used a little logic that I have in my brain and said, well, this this is one of the two burners that, that you know, would, would be the culprit. And it was the first one I tried. <laughs> Didn't have to try anything else. Uh, this happened a couple weeks ago and the stove's still working. So just wanted to share that story with you. I thought it made an interesting podcast. It's a good story and it certainly will help you in your life if you're a homeowner or a renter and you just don't have the money to, to or, or want to wait for somebody to come fix it. See if you can fix it yourself. Some of this stuff is not difficult. But again, if there are professionals out there listening going, come on, you're going to kill my... No, like I said, on the whole mounting a TV on the wall thing, I don't have currently have a stud finder and, and someone who puts up a TV every day for a year is going to be so much faster at it, quicker at it than I would be. I'm not saying it's difficult, but I didn't want to drill into my friend's wall, maybe miss the, 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 the stud and then it's not secure and one day it falls off the wall. You know, I was a little worried about that. So... Hired the professionals. They weren't here an hour and got it up, and it was great. And and they ran w- wires through the wall and things like that. But I did take notes. <laughs> I'm prepared to try it the next time that comes up. If you have any questions about this kind of stuff, like my dad. My dad was Mr. Fix-It. When he died, I got all of his tools, and I'm happy to use them if I can to help people. So why didn't I follow that as a vocation? I don't know. I, I'm not that Back then, that wasn't my idea, and I like what I do now better. But um, I guess it would be something to fall back on. At least I can fix stuff in the house. So home repairs, try and do it yourself if you can. 
that's just the best advice I can give anybody. I'm Scott Hamilton. Uh, Rockfile is my middle name. TheRockfile.com is my website with the links to all my other goodies. Please join us on, on Discord, although I haven't updated them much lately. I'm sorry about that. Life's been a little busy right now, but things are getting better and you will get more podcast out of me. So thank you very much for liking, sharing, subscribing, and listening. Have an amazing day. Amazing day.